Hello, I've got an announcement to make that this week's five minute video is going to be on vapour, hydrogen peroxide and decontamination. Hello, hope you're doing okay. It's Kim Sandal back with you with another video looking at clean room matters. And this week's subject is hydrogen peroxide, more specifically hydrogen peroxide vapour, which is used to decontaminate clean rooms and also isolators. Okay, so to begin with, uh, what is hydrogen peroxide? Well, it's the simplest type of peroxide and it's um, an oxidizing agent, which means that it strips or removes electrons um, from another substance through a redox chemical reaction. Um, it's manufactured from anthracene by bubbling compressed air, where you can kind of create this uh, simple oxygen to oxygen hydrogen arrangement. Um, it's used to decontaminate by a process called flash evaporation, which is where liquid hydrogen peroxide hits a hot plate and doof, you generate vapour. And specifically, it's a vapour rather than a gas because it exists almost in the gas state, but there is a degree of liquid as well. And actually, the thing that makes hydrogen peroxide in vapour form most effective as a decontamination agent is just this margin between the gas and the liquid phase. And achieving that makes it a powerful oxidising agent. So we use hydrogen peroxide vapour for the decontamination of isolators and um, other glove box type devices and also for clean room decontamination as well. And here it can be highly effective and we can measure that effectiveness in terms of distribution through chemical indicators and also in terms of um, kill by using biological indicators, which I'll say something about in a moment. So in terms of the antimicrobial activity, then if the hydrogen peroxide vapour makes contact, and importantly, there's no soiling, there's no dirt, grease, protein, that kind of matter, it can actually make contact, then it is very effective at destroying bacteria, viruses and fungi, and also against uh, parasite and parasite eggs as well, which are very hardy. And it does this by um, essentially interacting with the cell membrane, puncturing through the cell membrane, and effectively either causing the cell to collapse or triggering a train reaction that can sometimes be akin to causing the cell to explode from within. And I say it's powerful enough if it's the right concentration, if it's there for the right time, to penetrate through the cell wall as well. So, the advantages of hydrogen peroxide vapour are that it ends up being non-toxic substances and it is environmentally friendly because it breaks down into oxygen and to water. So it makes it easy to use in process areas and it's also very compatible with um, the kind of common equipment that you'd find within a clean room. So things like stainless steel and most plastics. And also it's, it's incredibly cheap. Hydrogen peroxide only costs a few pence to, to make, even at the concentrations known to be sufficiently antimicrobial, which is around 35% weight by volume of the hydrogen peroxide chemical in However, it is limited, and the reason it's limited is that unlike a lot of other sterilisation methods where you can penetrate the item that you want to sterilise, hydrogen peroxide only treats the surface. So unlike steam, dry heat, radiation, ethylene oxide, which can all penetrate, then hydrogen peroxide can only decontaminate the outside, which is one of the fundamental reasons why it's not called a sterilisation technology. It's also, by bodies like MHRA, seen as a little bit fragile in that 
you can get variations that affect the distribution if you get slight tweaks of temperature and humidity. It's not quite as robust as other decontamination, sterilization um, methods. And that distribution also comes down to the quality of the surface. You're only really going to work effectively with smooth, impervious surfaces. And there's some key parameters that need to be looked at to make hydrogen peroxide vapour work effectively, be that inside a decontamination chamber, isolator or clean room. So we have to get the right concentration of the hydrogen peroxide within the vapour. You have to have the right level of exposure time and we need to make sure that temperature and humidity are within the design parameters because otherwise we can inhibit the reaction that's taking place. So there are four general key phases for using hydrogen peroxide in the vapour form. And the first one is dehumidification. And that's about getting the humidity levels right, that they're sufficiently dry, that we can use the hydrogen peroxide um, vapour within. So we're targeting either 40 or 30 percent, depending on the system we're using. Then we go into conditioning. And this is about releasing hydrogen peroxide in vapour form. Remember, we've made it from this hot plate flash vaporisation step. And we're getting it into the area to make sure we get to the right concentration. Get the right concentration, and then we start the decontamination process. So that's the right concentration for the required amount of time. Making sure we've got good distribution, where we might need fans or some other mechanism to make sure that's distributing properly. After that, we need to get rid of it, we need to break down the hydrogen peroxide to an occupationally safe level. So we start aerating, which is the application of sterile air to replace the hydrogen peroxide with clean air to a level that it becomes safe. And it's often the aeration stages that take the longest time. So often people will sell hydrogen peroxide technology saying, hey, you can decontaminate in 15 minutes, isn't that wonderful? But you might spend three to four hours aerating if you're not using an effective technology. It's also important then to prove that the hydrogen peroxide vapor is actually working. So here we want to demonstrate microbial kill. So we use a biological indicator. A biological indicator is a known preparation of microorganisms in the spore state, which are resistant against the process we are testing. So the biological indicator for hydrogen peroxide is exactly the same as the biological indicator used to assess autoclaves. It's one that's called geobacillus. So it's from the earth, it's a bacillus type organism, Sterothermophilus. And this organism is isolated from the hot springs or geysers that erupt out of um, Yellowstone Park, is actually where it was found, at around a temperature of 95 degrees. So we have a population of a million spores carried on a substrate, typically a stainless steel disc, and within a period of time, we should get a nice steady destruction that follows what appears as a straight line when we put it onto a log chart. So it's what's called logarithmic reduction. It might be that every two minutes or every three minutes, we're reducing the microbial population spores by 10% till we get right down to uh, one or less than one. Now, cycles can go wrong. There are a number of variables. So if we don't get the temperature right, we don't get the humidity right, or we might need to water those in order to get a cycle to pass. And also sometimes the concentration of the gas can fluctuate and we need to make sure that's consistent. So when we're running hydrogen peroxide vapor systems, we need to check critical parameters and we can add to these uh, the time as well as the concentration, temperature, humidity. Make sure all of those are right. Much like running an autoclave, there's a series of key parameters that need to be assessed. But when it works, vapor hydrogen peroxide technology is very effective. We can use it to decontaminate items going into an aseptic processing area. We can use it to recover a clean room or a suite of clean rooms. And it is the key thing to prepare an isolator for 
aseptic filling. So hopefully um, this video was of some use, introducing a different subject. This week was vapour hydrogen peroxide. I've been Tim Sandal, hope it's been of interest. Good luck with the rest of your day and until next time, see you around. Goodbye.